Okay. <clears throat> so a little bit of uh, technical hitch up there, but uh, back to action. So it's interesting. Yeah. So, you know, uh, the short answer to a long uh, series of questions is that personal brand and building personal brand is very, very important in today's time. Uh, well, we are entrepreneurs. I'm an entrepreneur. And uh, a lot of you know that I work in space of travel and hospitality besides uh, <clears throat> working in the space of leadership and personal development. So a lot of my uh, actually examples come from the hospitality space. And one very interesting trend which I'm seeing is how some of the countries are gaining popularity as a go-to destination. And each one of us here, <clears throat> you know, uh, have our bucket list and every year the bucket list gets added to. For example, you know, a few, uh, few years ago, nobody knew about Croatia, but in last few years, if you ask a lot of people uh, have added Croatia as your bucket list. Now, how does that happen? So it's interesting. And, you know, there is a very uh, small country called Lipetsk. Uh, it's, uh, it's there on the Atlas, uh, Collins Atlas on page number 23. Uh, it has roughly around 1.2 million people. Uh, it's dead south of Moscow. It's on border of Ukraine. Uh, but it's not there on our mental map you and I might not have heard about it. I definitely had not heard about it till some time ago when I was reading a report about this woman called Natasha Grant who was um, passing through Russia and she was coming from Lipetsk and somebody asked her, so where had you been? And she said, I'd been to Lipetsk. And they said, okay, really? Is that a place? And um, this was next to Russia. And, you know, so she said, this is right on your border and you're not aware of it. Uh, so Natasha uh, Grand and her husband actually runs an organization called Institute for Identity, which is working in the space of building the brand of a nation, a city, a particular geography uh, from the purpose of boosting its position in the map of tourism industry, which means they work with the government of these particular cities and organizations to build the brand of that particular country and build their image and the perception and create that demand uh, so that, you know, people like you and me tomorrow make it a part of our bucket list. So it's interesting to see how over a period of time, uh, countries like Jordan, <clears throat> etc., have really kind of, uh, cities like Jordan, etc., have really come up uh, and, you know, people are looking at traveling to these places. So, Again, um, you know, kind of quoting uh, and on the, on, the, uh, on the threshold of repeating myself, uh, building personal brand and talking about it is extremely critical. Taking another example of uh, a couple of cities uh, which are like, uh, you know, uh, very, very uh, popular. Uh, so, well, that was a, a screenshot of Lipetsk. You know, beautiful, beautiful uh, place. So maybe you can add it to your bucket list. Not just that, even if you look at some of the popular cities uh, like New York, Las Vegas, each one of them, if you think about them, have a very strong brand association. When you say New York, you do kind of recollect the symbol of I love New York t-shirts, merchandise, and if you thought it happened by chance, it did not happen by chance. There was a method to this madness. There was a strategy behind uh, promoting this city in terms of its popularity, in terms of its image amongst both corporate uh, travelers as well as tourists. Similarly with Vegas, you know, we all are aware of this famous line, what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. So these examples um, uh, show us that, you know, building a brand is very, very critical and it has something uh, very positive as an outcome. I mean, you and me today uh, would love to go to New York, would love to go to Las Vegas, not just because, you know, they are American cities, because we they've been promoted in a way to create that demand and excitement in our mind. Uh, and therefore, uh, you know, there are hundreds of cities in the world but not all cities become a part of a bucket list. Uh, we do want to go to certain places, not to all the places. Similarly, if, if you look at uh, the corporate workspace, you know, there are hundreds of people working around us, some with similar skill sets, some with a similar kind of uh, work output, which is, uh, you know, kind of uh, <clears throat> required from them. 
So, um, you know, we are one amongst them. So how do we make sure that I stand out amongst many, many others out there? Well, we're typically talking about career growth, which means we're looking at a pyramid as we grow up the ladder. And the pyramid, all of us know, is on, you know, it kind of gets narrower as we go up the ladder, which means the amount of space in which we are standing becomes lesser and lesser. So we need to find our own ground there. We need to find our own space there. And therefore, building this is, is extremely important. So let's hear from you, you know, what do you understand of brand before I talk more about brand? Because, you know, all of us know what brands are. We consume brands day in and day out. So let's hear what, what is your view on what brand is, you know. You can text your messages uh, in the chat box out there. Brand is identity, bang on. <clears throat> Anyone else? What do you understand of what is brand? Okay, unique selling proposition. It's a promise or trust. Yes, that's right. Brand is a promise of, uh, you know, what you are, what you're going to uh, propose to the world. It shows a reflection of what you are. Yes, absolutely. Building trust. Yes, we want to buy something because we trust that particular brand. Brand is design and trademark. Yes, as we saw, I love York, the logo. Even if I love NY, we, we can recollect that it is about New York. Absolutely. Creating differentiation, sold out due to its product value. Yes. So I think, you know, all of us are very clear of what brand is. Um, it's about promise. It's about trust. It's about uh, delivering what you stand for. And it definitely is about the unique identity of who you are. And, and now it's all about, you know, how do we build this identity and how do we communicate this identity? to the rest of the world. Um, so in a, in a fair and uh, ideal world, your talent and your hard work should be good enough to give you a rock star status at work. Um, it should be able to push you in the direction where you want to go. It should be able to convince people about the qualities which you bring to the table, right? We, we think we work really hard and, and we are honest to uh, our commitment and that should be enough. Uh, it happens with a lot of us, you know, a lot of us think that way. But um, really, you know, when there are hundreds of uh, similar kind of uh, us out there thinking that our hard work will speak alone for ourselves, um, it does not really happen that way way fair or unfair you know we can debate about it whether it should happen that way or not but it does definitely does not happen that way or only so of course hard work is important your honesty is important your credibility is important all that is very important but also what is important in today's time is the sheen it's it's the polishing it's it's telling the world that you're there it's the visibility of who you are and where you are and we have seen, and I'm sure all of you would have seen that the scale often tilts in favor of those with a superior personal brand. People who built some, uh, you know, have given more time to building their brand. More people know them. They're more visible. They're more out there in the face. And therefore, the brand recollection is higher for those people. Has it happened to all of us so many times? Oh, I also do it equally well. But, you know, I was not chosen for this project or my name was not given for the promotion, but I have really worked hard. So many a times we, we try to figure out that uh, it has not happened because of someone else's fault. I'm not saying it's your fault, but I'm saying definitely there is a little gap out there in terms of how we are promoting ourselves, how we are pushing ourselves. 
and we all want to grow that career ladder and we all know that you know the attention span of people have come become really really less a lot of all of you are parents and you know the attention span of children have become less similarly attention span of us as adults also have become less and there's just too much information and too many things out there so how do i make sure that i stand out that i am known for the work which i am doing i'm known for who i am and therefore if if everything else being equal if i have to today choose a person a over person b and everything else being equal uh, i might most probably choose a person who's more who's more seen who's um, more visible uh, who's more prominent out there and that is why building being a strong brand is it matters Full stop. It does matter. Your behavior, your personality, all of it reflects your brand, and um, it, it it does definitely matter. So, how many of you think there is another question coming up? How many of you think you are a brand? And what what makes you think so? How many of you think you're yeah i have not seen any message out there so none of you out there think that you're a brand okay i think because i lack it do not think so for myself okay i'm thank you for being so honest and uh, you know upfront with your sharings okay uh, everyone is a brand uh, sarika says whether you like it or not yes i lead by example a brand could be negative or positive yeah yes so um everybody is yeah yeah so i think you know uh, what sarika says is absolutely right um whether we we want to note whether we think of ourselves as a brand or not every one of us is a brand we are a brand we might not be aware but we still a brand so whether it's a ceo of a blue chip company or whether it's a one of the thousand coders sitting on one of the table in a it company in bangalore he or she is still a brand <clears throat> each one of us are a brand whether we like it or not whether we have worked on it or not so now that we know that we are brand because you know we you all mentioned that brand is about identity brand is about um, you know being uh, out there being visible and each one of us are visible uh, now the thing is uh, are we visible in the way we want to be or are we visible as the world wants to see us so so let's look at another example of what kind of a brand are we are we just another common brand or are we a super brand what is the difference between a common brand and a super brand i mean um, have you heard about this company called crosspen which is into stationery how many of you have used crosspen uh, notebooks or uh, crosspen uh, pens or or other stationery or have bought it for your children how many of you would have heard the term classmate have you have you seen it in stationery shop very popular brand yes not heard about cross brand exactly so but it's a brand it's a brand which we have not heard about visible classmate which is a brand which we have heard, heard about so do we want the question is do we want to be just another common brand that we don't know of or do we want to be the classmate you know because there is a certain kind of trust associated with there's a certain kind of quality associated with crosspen also could be the same thing but maybe crosspen has not spent enough time building its brand and we'll come to it in a little later stage but the idea is therefore if you have to pick between crosspen and classmate with everything else being equal probability of you picking up a classmate would be much higher than you picking up a crosspen if the choice is there so what does a strong personal brand bring out for you what do you think what kind of 
uh, option does it open for you? What are the, some of the possibilities that it can bring across to you? How does a strong personal brand help you? Yeah, any thoughts there? Awareness, more opportunities, network, absolutely, bang on. It increases if your visibility, absolutely. More people get to know you. It helps in creating a very strong identity. Repeated work in customers, absolutely. People like to work with you. They want to come to you. It might help me choose among many others. Yes, we just talked about little things like promotions and appraisals and, and visibility, and it definitely helps you there. More work when we are good at it. Yes, absolutely. So uh, what, what Sumit is wanting to say is that if you are good in a particular skill and you're being able to tell that to the world, you get more work to, to kind of exhibit that skill again and again, which will add to your benefit because that comes naturally to you. You're good at it and you're getting more, more opportunities to, to display those skills. Yes, it's inspiring. Good brand is equal to chosen over others. Absolutely. So a strong brand brings and, you know, a numerous set of benefits. Uh, it brings you new opportunities. Um, it, I, I feel that, you know, it, it definitely helps you build a very strong network, helps you even in stakeholder management. For example, if you, if you have to negotiate, you have to influence, you have to convince, and if you have a strong brand, people are more open to listening to you. If you have built your brand as a thought leader, people, people are, are open to listening for more feedback rather than trying to uh, kind of, you know, negate your point of view. It becomes easy to uh, influence, convince people. Similarly, building trust and recognition with a strong brand, trust comes easily. You know, uh, you go, I, I don't, you, you're maybe a little younger generation, but when we were young and we used to go for a shoe shopping, I still remember in those lanes in our small town out there, there used to be these small shoe shops uh, with these um, shoe cartons without any brand on it. And then on those times we had just a barter maybe and later on Liberty came in and we would just hope that our parents don't take us into those shoe shops and they take us into Bata and that we get a Bata shoe as we walk back. And uh, you know why? Because there was a certain uh, trust which, uh, which we could associate with Bata that I can run faster in my sports, uh, you know, and things like that. As kids, we used to think about it. So it definitely builds trust. It creates more recognition. Reputation, it also builds your reputation. Uh, a strong personal brand uh, kind of... Uh, creates positive, Sarika talked about positive and negative perception. It creates uh, positive uh, uh, perception. Of course, a strong positive brand, you know, um, as we know that brand can become positive or negative. And there are a lot of people we've seen going down the drain because um, they, they were able to successfully manage uh, building a negative brand for themselves. And, and also very importantly, it boosts our own self-confidence, you know, that, okay, I am good at it. I can push for a little more. People are acknowledging and recognizing me for my hard work. It definitely does give you an adrenaline rush. It definitely gives you a boost of uh, confidence and, and self-esteem as well. And most importantly, it definitely helps you grow your career exponentially. So I always believe that, you know, there are two ways of growing. You can definitely, uh, you know, do your regular stuff and you, you're growing organically. Uh, but what happens by the time you reach the podium, the steam might be completely out. You might be tired. You might uh, run out of inspiration, motivation. Uh, but, you know, if you can fast track your career path, uh, why not? You know, because then you can grow exponentially. And a strong brand is one of the factors which can help you in your career path growing exponentially. I'm not saying it's the only thing. And we'll talk also about it. Building a brand does not mean just talking about um, yourself. There is a lot of pre-work which has to be done. There's a lot of groundwork on which your personal brand stands. So, 
the hurdle one which i feel is um, is there in people's mind is why a personal brand is important and therefore i thought before talking about how to build a personal brand it is important for all of us to understand why it is important why it is important for you for each one of you the reasons could be very different so you have to think why is it important for you because once you're convinced that it is important for you doing rest of the stuff becomes easy because it comes naturally for you that you have to work on it <clears throat> so we were talking about what is a brand but what is your personal brand how do you build your personal brand so your personal brand is uh, the your perceived equity by people around you how you understood by people their opinion about you their perception about you the positioning that you have created in people's mind so there's two part to it because a lot of time people will ask me oh which means that you know it's always about how people are perceiving me which means i'm giving the control in someone else's hand to perceive the way they want to perceive me no it does not happen completely like that it is a two way process it's about what is the information that i am putting out there for people to create the perception the way they are creating the perception so the input is being given by me which is being then interpreted by the other person to create that perception so there's a lot of communication which happens out there so um you know it it's i i always feel that um your personal brand is kind of a sum total of multiple things to begin with this it 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 is definitely a sum total of your past proven records how you been doing in your work how have you interacted with people how how do people see you helping other or or leading others or or making certain decisions so your past records uh, proven records definitely play a very important role in building um, a brand of who you are you can definitely add to that as a, a a promise of future performance as well so as we as we talked about in the session as well you know your your past brings you to where you are today but your personal brand is also about what people perceive as to how much more can you do uh, how much is the potential for you to grow so it is also a promise of uh, future performance it is also belief that gets created based on certain tangible and intangible factors and these tangible and intangible factors um are you know the tangible factors are the actual output of the work which you're doing the intangible factors are the softer issues the life skill issues the behavior uh, your interaction we talked about emotional intelligence in the last session and it had four different parts you know managing self managing others managing your emotions so the intangible part of your brand perception uh, depends also a lot of uh, how well you've kind of um, you know uh, developed yourself on the scale of emotional intelligence uh, your reputation and credibility and of course the size and quality of your network as well uh, who knows you um, whom are you seen around with that also creates a Uh, brand perception and and there's nothing wrong in that nobody is being judgmental about it and again i'll take example of children because you know i have a child and i'm sure a few of you also have children and i you know all the time we say that you know uh, who is your friend circle whom are you moving around with because we know that there is a certain influence which happens on uh, our children's mind uh, based on the people whom they interact with and therefore we also perceive a uh, a certain uh, quality of the child based on the uh, kind of friends the child has and it it happens with us also and it's also very common saying to say that who you are is a um, uh, sum of uh, the five pe people who are closest to you with whom you interact with so your personal network also plays a very important role in creating a brand perception for you so people are observing you all the time you know um so we cannot definitely fake it we have to be true to who we are and therefore the first step of building a brand uh is about knowing self we already talked a little bit about knowing self uh, in one of the sessions that we had uh and i'm coming back to that point because this is the basic or foundation of building your personal brand who you are what's your personal value system 
what is your specifically in the space of career growth and in in the in the uh, in, in the frame of uh, a corporate uh, career growth your purpose your goal your vision uh, how well is it framed how well is it crafted how well is it positioned becomes very important in creating the perception in people's mind of where you want to go what you want to do and therefore one of the most common statements which are used uh, in describing a personal brand is by jeff bezos when he says personal brand is what people say about you when you leave the room so it is also not <clears throat> just by what you say it's about what you do and i know of examples of ceos not being shortlisted potential ceos of a company after five seven eight rounds of interview with the biggest mnc firms of the world because somebody spotted them speaking very rudely to a waiter in a restaurant so um, you know the ceo might have put in his or her best foot out there but um, you know you being observed all the time so it's again as i will repeat myself by saying it's your personal brand is not who you not are uh, it is about who you are which means you are true to yourself at any given point of time because you are seen everywhere and you yourself see yourself so this is something which you cannot fake over a period of time because you're living your brand every second uh, i think there are some comments there so i'll just take a pause and um, see if there are some messages okay so uh, there's some nice positive feedback which makes me feel absolutely nice and happy so and if there are any any challenges any questions please pop them up um we will take them up either uh, in the middle of the conversation or maybe if it's something which is out of context of the present uh, topic which i'm discussing then we, i can take it up at the end of the uh, presentation as well so <clears throat> We talked about a brand. We talked about uh, your personal brand of who you are, uh, depending on you know your values, your goals. What is it that you want to talk about? So then, what is personal branding? How is it different from a personal brand? It's not really different, except for the fact that one is a noun and the other is a verb, which means that personal branding is all about now working on building that brand. It is. Um, it's a process it's an exercise uh, which you do to manage your public perception uh, control and influence uh, the image you want to project to the world uh, for a desired outcome and i'm going to stress on this point desired outcome i don't want you or i to shy away from that when we are building a personal brand we're definitely looking at certain benefits coming out of it tangible or intangible and there is nothing wrong in seeking professional advantages and benefits till the time we are true to who we are and we are not faking it it's absolutely fine to go out and tell the world who we are so um, this whole process of building your brand over a period of time and we talked about the sum total of the past the future of the behavior of the tangible of the intangible this whole process put together and every day doing certain things consciously is the process of building your personal brand so if if i have to put again the same thing in a different set of words is like personal branding is a sustained process it's not a one time activity it's a sustained process of building a desired positioning in mind of others and enhancing your chances to be offered unique opportunities to prove worth and be amply rewarded for it so mark these words about sustained process desired outcome and enhancing your chances for those unique opportunities that you are seeking within the organization see as a coach i always believe that the locus of control is within us we can't control the environment but what we can control is the input which we are bringing onto the table so it's always easy to put the blame somewhere else but it's always great and more productive to look inwards and see how can i do things different 
to make a mark. So last time when I was not appreciated or maybe, you know, my, I was not promoted or I didn't get what I wanted to, could I have done something different? Could I have communicated it different? Could I have interacted different? Could I have talked about it a little differently? What could I have done differently? If my input in terms of my work uh, input was um, all okay, what else could I have done? Rather than saying, oh, the organization didn't recognize me or my boss did not favor me and there's too much of favoritism happening around. Well, this is real world. We can, these things will always happen. But the locus of control is with me, which means how do I do things differently? And at this point of time, I want to share two of my most favorite personalities. You know, the world has not been fair to maybe a lot of us. You know, if, if we've seen that, you know, that at times the organization was not fair or the bosses were not fair or the colleagues were not fair. You know, you and I are not uh, unique in that perspective. The world... Uh, is, is a tough place and it's sometimes fair and sometimes unfair. Uh, so I, I'm sure all of you recognize these two bright smiling faces, Oprah Winfrey and, and Richard Branson. And Oprah Winfrey is undoubtedly the queen of personal branding. You know, she built a personal brand which is more than $2.5 billion plus when I read about it. Um, you know, and, and she has stuck to her core. I mean, when I see her, I see her as someone who's pushed her potential, who's, who's kind of understood her potential. She's aware of her potential and she's pushed her boundaries to optimize her potential all the time. And what I see that, you know, she does it that with her viewers. She does it that with people whom she's interviewing. She is absolutely to the, to the, the core from that perspective. And that's her brand. And it comes across all the time. It comes across all the time. Uh, that's about building an individual brand and building an industry for herself out there. On the other hand, we have somebody um, as vivacious as Richard Branson. I mean, how many CEOs uh, of uh, different airlines do you, how many air, airline CEO do you really know of? I mean, if you ask me, uh, United Airlines CEO, I might not remember the name, but Virgin Atlantic, we will definitely remember the name. Why? because of the strong personal brand which Richard has built for himself. And he stands for uh, adventure, he stands for risk-taking. So in whatever he does, whether, you know, dressing up like a flight attendant and actually being a flight attendant in one of the flights or doing a bungee jumping, uh, whatever it takes, uh, it stands for adventure, risk-taking, um, and, you know, challenging the status quo, he is somebody who's done it time and again. And therefore, you and I, in all probability, would know him over many other CEOs uh, who are there. Uh, there's something in the chat box, so let me just have a um, brand as a value. How do you know what's worth of your brand? Okay, so that's an interesting question. And as I said, it is two-way. There's a certain value which I will put uh, to myself. Uh, and there is a certain value which the others, because brand is also for other people. So there is a certain value which others will put to that. And it has to be somewhere in convergence. It can't be skewed completely that I put my value I up there and, you know, uh, the perceived value is very less by others or vice versa. You know, I have come across people who have, who have very high perceptions, positive perceptions in people's mind, but they don't themselves have high positive perceptions about themselves. So therefore their self-confidence is less. And therefore, you know, though the potential is there, they're not doing enough to harness that potential. So it can happen either way and it has to be a convergence of both up there. And of course, you know, uh, this might require a longer conversation. So feel free to reach out to us and I can have a separate conversation with you and kind of, you know, having a more one-on-one -on -one conversation to help you understand that better. So for sure, brand building, uh, and, as a, and, and even to assess the value, one has to understand that it is not a one-day exercise. So um, it's also, you know, on what parameters do you want to, uh, to assess your brand to, to be able to give that value? So for example, if for Richard Branson, adventure and risk-taking is a score, is the value, uh, then, you know, if you and I are asked about his brand, 
probably we are going to say the same stuff for him. So what are those parameters uh, that you want to be known for? What are those skills that you want to be known for? Outline that and then you first of all assess yourself. How do you see yourself in doing that? And a good exercise is maybe you can just go and ask a couple of your close friends, colleagues. Uh, um, you know, this is an exercise which we do pretty often um, uh, with your business partners and ask them as to how do they see you in these particular uh, in this particular respect and 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 you will and you can ask for some honest feedback and people are happy to give us honest feedback and that helps us assess our brand value as well if we are ready to take that feedback yeah any other questions so far Okay, there's something else in the chat. Let me see. In today's world, you need to reinventing your personal brand. Yeah, that's true. Um, so stay with that thought, and I will, uh, I, I I will address it in some time. Uh, reinventing. Maybe when I'm talking about the building blocks right here, we can talk about it. Uh, reinvention is key. Uh, so let's go through the building blocks, and I'm going to take this question. Uh, post this. Now the, the question is, how do you build your brand sustainably over a period of time? Um, so one, you, you already have assessed what are the skills, uh, who you are, which is your personal brand. Now it is about building the building part, the verb part, the doing part. So what are you doing or what do you need to do to do that? So the first and the most important thing is uh, uh, communication you need to talk about who you are you need to tell people what you stand for and that has to happen over a sustained period of time so communication is absolutely key out there there are two ways of doing it so um you know uh, one is you talking about it and second is you're so good in it and you have such a strong network sponsors around you uh, like right now you're working with your mentors now if you're having a great mentoring session and if you're doing what you expected to do as a part of the mentoring process tomorrow your mentor would say oh i had a great mentee and this mentee was absolutely fantastic when he or she came for the session they were completely prepared they came with the past notes and blah 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 and a hundred other things so tomorrow your mentor starts talking about you which also starts building your brand so you communicating and people around you communicating for you are two very important aspects about the communication bit of it. So absolutely critical to talk. And uh, yes, as a culture, as I said, we don't feel very comfortable talking about it. It's also gender skewed. Um, you know, um, research shows that women uh, conventionally are little less prone to talking about themselves than men and this is because of cultural upbringing and this is across the world it's not just india but things are changing and we are becoming more comfortable talking about ourselves so um you have to become talking uh, comfortable talking about yourself and not think about that oh i'm bragging or uh, you know um, that's okay you know we as adults and as mature people we know the difference between bragging and talking about ourselves so communication is key second is what is your unique compelling quotient what is so unique to you what is so uh, specific about you that people remember you for that and it could be there are two parts to it again one part could be related to the work which you're doing and the other is the intangible which is the softer part which is your behavior it could be as simple as reaching on time it could be as simple as making sure that you you remember the name of the people who uh, you are addressing to uh, it could be as small as you've gone into a into a restaurant and you make sure to know the name of the person who's serving you and rather than just calling him excuse me or uh, you know uh, hey there and you know kind of making a symbol from your hand you ask the person what's your name and therefore call out that person by name these are small small things uh, which helps you uh, build your brand and 
which people remember. And these things go a long way. And again, I'm saying there's certain things which are core. You cannot fake it. So do you have these habits? Uh, so one is your work habit and second is your behavior. Both of these can together form that unique uh, position for you, unique compelling uh, positioning for you. So find out what is your unique compelling uh, positioning. What is that which, which is the hook for people to remember you? The third block is, of course, the credibility. What you say, what you do can't be two different things. And credibility is, again, established over a, a period of time. It, it does not come in one go. So you have to uh, show the same qualities again and again and again and again for people to uh, you know, kind of trust you because credibility end of the day builds trust. And uh, recently we saw examples of a couple of, sometimes it happens with celebrities, they say something and they do something and, you know, the entire media will go um, and, and you and I on social media will, will go, uh, you know, completely, it, it completely backlashes. It happened with uh, uh, Priyanka Chopra recently when she talked about Las Diwali, about the pollution and how she has a kid suffered through asthma asking people not to use Diwali crackers and then she would found uh, you know in one of her personal holidays smoking and and the media caught it and then there was a whole issue about it oh my god if you had asthma you caught smoking you're you're telling it to the world that you know don't create smoke and you creating smoke so credibility is very very key otherwise it can just backlash at you so that's why going back to that slide of knowing who you are and what are your values is very, very important. And then, of course, consistency. It's a sustained process. You need to do it again and again and again and again. Uh, and, at, and, and at different places. We talk about social media as well. So we have to do it at uh, different places. And all this together forms an authentic uh, you. So the building blocks, I'm, I'm kind of, putting it all together, communicate, 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 find your compelling factor, build your credibility by doing what you really believe in, be consistent, be the authentic you. And having this clarity is very critical, clarity of what you want to achieve, what is your objective. So today, if, if I take an example of beyond diversity, what we want to achieve is equal opportunities for all that is our objective so we're very clear in that statement so people know that we stand for equality people know that we stand for inclusion because that's what we want to achieve so what what do you want to achieve where is it that you want to go where you are currently and therefore how much work what kind of work you will have to do who's your audience for us our audience is maybe a lot of corporate professionals a lot of uh, corporate stakeholders uh, policy makers those are those people are audience so i need to be seen on those platforms where these people are there because end of the day if i'm saying something i want people to hear out i want be i want to be able to influence them which means i need to reach out to them off uh, on social media or off social media so who are my target who is my target audience and what do i want the world to know about myself so if, if I am taking myself as an example, I definitely want the world to know that, you know, I am a coach and I love my coaching. It's a passion. It's a calling for me. It comes naturally to me. So I'll talk about it. I also want the world to know that, you know, uh, even when I'm doing, and I also work in space of inclusion. So even when I'm thinking travel, I'm thinking inclusion. So that's very core. So what skills I want to tell the world is these are the couple of skills which I want to tell the world and I work around it. So this crosses the hurdle too, which is about where to start and how to work on personal branding. So you start with yourself, then you start with the process and you do it sustainably over a period of time. Which brings us to the very important conversation now, which is the third hurdle which typically people face is about social media. How, whether we should be there on social media, whether we should not be there on social media, uh, OFB is all about showing off and, and things like that. We can say whatever we want to be uh, to about social media, but it's like you the same debate which we had 
when we were growing up, technology is a boon or a bane. And there is no clear cut answer to that. So social media is necessary. It is important. We have to be there. If we want to build a brand and if our target audience is out there in the world, we have to be there. How we use social media is a different story out there. So of course, uh, you know, there's a problem of plenty because there's LinkedIn, there's Facebook, there's Instagram, and you can see the whole screen is cluttered with various handles. So the question is um, where to be, where not to be, and how much uh, time to be spending out there. Again, there's no uh, specific answer, but um, a suggestion, because we work with many, many people out uh, there is uh, for corporate professionals, a good idea is to definitely begin with something on LinkedIn, which is, which is very, very key because <clears throat> LinkedIn is where most of your professional network is formed. LinkedIn is where most of the people from your organization would be there or, you know, people in the similar space out there. It helps build your profile. It helps you follow other people in the same space. There's a lot of conversation going on. There's a lot of knowledge sharing, which is happening on LinkedIn. And um, there's, a, there's a very strong chance of you establishing yourself as a thought leader on LinkedIn, because this is a serious platform. People are not riffraffing on LinkedIn. They're not showing off their personal photographs out there. So this is something which definitely you should think about if you're not active on LinkedIn, that's one place you should start working on. These are a couple of tips uh, which you should keep in mind uh, when you are there on LinkedIn. Uh, good professional photograph, um, a unique positioning statement or a strategic headline, as we say, um, good LinkedIn recommendations. Again, don't fake it. Ask it from people whom you've worked and interacted with. Um, manage your skills and endorsements. And, and if you have presentations which you've done, if you have videos which you, uh, where you're presenting something or um, you know, articles which you've written, it's a great place to share that for the world to know about who you are, what you think, what your expertise is. So this definitely as a starting point, I would say is a must. If there is any other handle which you should follow depending upon um, how much you want to be seen there is the second one is for sure Twitter. Because uh, Twitter is an amazing following and it's a great place to network with a larger set of people. Great place to network with a lot of influencers out there. Yeah. So if you want to build your profile to over, over a larger, wider audience, uh, Twitter can be quite influential from that perspective. Uh, you start following influencers and you start, you know, kind of putting out your thoughts. And let me tell you, it's a, initially a very lonely journey. It's a very tough journey. And it really takes time to build your profile on Twitter. But if you are at it over a period of time, um, you'll be able to do it. Personally, I, I, I tried thrice and then I kind of sustained to be there. There are times when I'm off it also, you know, when I'm tired, when I don't have time. But it's a part of my strategy that, you know, I can't be off Twitter. So I will definitely make sure that if I have something to convey, something to say, it does go on Twitter. So for me, as, as an individual, I feel it is important. You have to take a call how much time you have and what kind of social media presence you want to build for yourself. Based on that, you can choose to be on Twitter or not choose to be on Twitter. But LinkedIn definitely to begin with is a must. And, and the new um, uh, stuff which is happening in the organization is your internal social media group. One of the examples is Workplace by Facebook. So. Uh, if there is uh, something like that, you can be uh, part of that as well. Um, you know, again, within that, how do you engage? How much you engage? What kind of content are you putting up? Um, you know, ask questions. Sometimes if you don't have content, you can ask questions. You can jump into discussions, um, you know, participate in discussions, share a lot of articles which you've read, relevant articles which you've read and things like that. So how much you've seen and, uh, is very important out here if you want to build your brand, which is um, off just the people who, with whom you're physically interacting um, uh, in, in your office space. Uh, so there are a couple of uh, messages out there. I'll just have a look at them and then respond to them. But before that, I just want to also talk about, because, you know, we already are at uh, 12 o'clock. Um, so what not to do on social media is also very critical. 
So uh, not too many personal pictures and information, any negative uh, feedback about people, about organization. Social media is not a place to vent. I personally would want to uh, give positive uh, thoughts. I would, I would personally would want to uh, give opinions which would help the society or an individual or an organization to move forward rather than try and all the time bring people and organizations down. Uh, bad language, completely, I don't know. Uh, grammar and spelling mistakes, no. It, it all talks about my brand. So everything which I do on social media leaves a footstep forever and ever. And every day we're reading how Facebook and other media handles are uh, super invasive in our lives. So everything which you do stays there for eternity. So be very conscious, be very clear about what you want to put, whom you want to interact with on social media. Having said that, it, I feel personally it is important to be out there. So let me see, there are some messages out there. Um, okay, have to leave, okay. Mm. Yes, so I think it's 12 and people have uh, to leave and I'm also done. Um, the last part was definitely a little rushed up, but I think you've got an idea about social media as well. So um, go out there, uh, build your brand, uh, start from where you are today. And uh, the third hurdle which we've just crossed is like clarity on how to build your brand on social media. And if you do not have complete clarity, it's okay. You can do some bit more of research. You can reach out to us. We'll be sharing more articles about it as well. So over the period of time, your understanding of building your brand on social media also will be clear. So my concluding statement for the session would be, it's time to look inward, uh, to discover yourself and uh, find your place in the world out there. I still had one question which I have not answered, which is about reinventing your brand. So maybe, uh, you know, I'll talk about it. Uh, maybe in an article, I'll share about it. And uh, Namrata can share that article with you. And if you still have any question around it, I'm happy to take it personally as well. So um, time to say bye. I hope you enjoyed the session. And if you have questions, you can write to us and we would love to answer those questions. to come in. Assess value and reinventing. Maybe we Thank you for all the lovely messages pouring in. I'm happy that you loved the session and it was fruitful for all of you. So um, yes, we'll be sharing the recording link as well. Um, we'll be sharing it with Neha and Varun and maybe further it can be shared with you. Thank you.